This is the third section of chapter eight on critical path analysis. And this section is about early and late event times. Okay, so the first thing we need to go through is this, the time an activity takes to complete is called its duration. Now on an activity network, let's say we've got uh, an event like this, event A, then it will have a number in brackets and that number tells you how long activity A takes to complete. So this seven may be seven hours, seven days, but it'll be some sort of duration. Now to show these early and late event times, nodes in activity network are replaced by two boxes. So what you'll see on activity network are two sort of stacked boxes like this. The top box, in that number, we'll have a number that we call the early event time. And the bottom box is going to contain a number which we call the late event time. Now, the early event time, the number we put in this box, is the earliest time an activity can start or finish. Start if the boxes are put at the beginning of the activity finish if the boxes are at the end of the activity. And this includes the fact that um, previous activities must be completed. And the later event time that let me put in this box is the latest time an activity can start or finish. So the latest time it will start will be in the bottom box here, the, this side of an activity. And the latest time it can finish will be the bottom box of uh, at this side of the activity. Now in the source node, um, the two numbers in the boxes will always be zero. And in the sync node, these two values here will always be the same. Now to work out the early event time, we perform something called a forward pass or forward scan. And basically we need to work out the longest time to finish, the longest time to get to the end of an activity. For the late event time, we perform what we call a backward pass or scan, and this is the shortest time to start an activity. Now, the way I help myself to remember this is that I just remember this uh, phrase, forward, high, backward, low. So let's do a quick example of one. Right, so you've got an activity network here. You can see we've got the early and late event time boxes for the nodes. So we can start off the source node is always going to be zero, zero. So now we're going to perform a forward pass or a forward scan to allow us to work out what numbers go in all of these top boxes here. Right, so remember forward, high. Now that will make sense in a moment. So when I get to the end of activity A, what's the earliest time I can finish activity A? Well, there are no other events feeding into it or no other um, activities feeding into it. So I can just put two down here. Right, how about activity B? Well, there are no other events it's waiting on. So I can just put a seven in this box here. Similarly, when I get to the end of activity C, there are no other events that I'm waiting on. So the earliest time that I can finish C, event C, is going to be six. So notice, that this box represents two things, the earliest time that A can finish and the earliest time that C can start. That's why it's the early start and finish time because one box represents two things, the end of one activity and the beginning of another activity, unless it's the source node or the sync node. Okay, let's have a look at this box here. What's the earliest time that I can get to this point 
for D to finish. Well, if I take this route here, 2 plus another 3 gives me 5. I'm just going to write it here for the moment because there may be other values. However, if I go this route, it's going to take 7 units of time to get to here. A dummy. There's always no wait or time on a dummy. So once B is finished, then D can we can get to this point here at the end of D. So I've got a choice of five or seven. Now remember, forward high, I need to pick the highest value. So that will be seven. Now sometimes students get a bit confused by this. Think of it like a um, uh, 100 meter, uh, let's say, sprint. And there's a 100 meter sprint. Some runners are faster than others. And there's someone on the finish line and he can only go home once everyone's finished a race. Well, he can't go home when the first run is finished. He has to wait until everyone is finished before he can start going home. It's the same here. We cannot continue from this point until the slowest activity, the slowest time has finished. So when we do a forward pass, we work out these different values and we take the highest one because we can't move on to F when it's only five units of time because B wouldn't have finished yet, yeah? And activity F depends on B being completely finished. So we take the highest value. Then for the uh, sync node at the end, we'll write down the different values that we get. So if we, um, after activity C, we've got two, add two more onto that. So that will be eight from that route up here this route here well that's seven and then this is going to be another four so this will be 11 units of time before we get to this point and if i'm taking this route activity b is seven g is one so that's going to be nine so that's going to be nine units of time before i get to this point now when can i actually finish well it's when everyone's finished and it's going to be the longest time, the highest value, which is 11. So 11 goes in here. Now we can fill in the um, late event time here, because remember in the sync node, these two values are the same. And then we'll be able to form a backward pass or scan. And when we do that, we look for the lowest values and I'll show you how that works. So we'll put 11 in here. So when we do a backwards scan, rather than adding these activity times on, we subtract them. So I'll do 11 minus one, so I can get to this point at 10. So I'm not gonna write it in the box because there may be more than one. Uh, whichever way, well, if I get to this point here, so 11 minus four, and this one will be seven. Now there aren't any other ways to get back here. So this is going to be seven. So it's going to be the same number in the bottom box, which then means working backwards because a dummy has no weight to it. This is also going to be seven. With a backward pass, I take the lowest of the values. So this is going to be seven in this box as well. Then if we work up here, 11 minus two will give me nine to go in this box. There aren't any other routes to get to here going backwards. So nine will go here. Then if I carry on from here, nine minus four will give me five. But that's not the only route to get back here. If I go from this route here, so I take the late event time. So seven minus three will give me four. And I take the lowest of those two values so it will be four that goes into this box. So just remember forward high, backward low. Example five, the diagram shows part of an activity network, calculate the value of X. So we're calculating this um, early event time. So early event means forward pass and forward means finding the highest value. So if we take this route two, plus five and actually we'll write down the calculation 
So two plus five will give me seven. Okay, so that's from this root here. From this root, it's going to be seven plus three, which will give me ten. So it could be ten. And then the other root is here nine as a dummy, so there's no cost or weight or time involved. So that will just be nine. Like that. And when we go forward, forward high. So we take the highest value, so it's going to be ten. So x equals ten. Example six. The diagram shows part of an activity network. Calculate the value of y. So we're going to have to do a backward scan, a backward pass. And remember, backward low. So we want to find the lowest of the values working backwards. So working backwards on this upper root here, we would do 6 minus 1. So that would give us a time of 5. So we've just done this, 6 minus 1. So it could be 5 that goes here, but we need to consider all of the roots. Here we would do 10 minus 3. So 10 minus 3, which is 7. So I'll just write down here, it could be 5, it could be 7. And then if I take this root here, 8 minus 4 is going to be 4. So it could be 4. 8 minus 4 equals 4. Now remember, backward low. So I want to take the lowest of those three values and it's four. So y is equal to four. So you should now be able to do exercise 8c on pages 231 to 232. So just remember, forward high, backward low.